This video will help you understand how to factor in required minimum distributions as it pertains to owning an annuity inside of your IRA. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Dime. I'm a financial planner out of Edmonds, Washington, and I specialize in working with folks to and through retirement. One very frustrating topic for clients as they age into their 70s and beyond is the topic of required minimum distributions or the forced withdrawals one must make from their pre-tax retirement accounts. A very common investment vehicle to own within an IRA is an annuity. And while annuities provide a guaranteed income for life, that guaranteed income factors into one's total required minimum distribution for the year. And if you're not doing the math correctly, you could end up either paying too much in the form of income taxes on over withdrawing from your IRA, or you might pull out too little and then end up paying a 25% penalty tax on the incorrect math that you've done. So in today's video, we'll talk about how to factor in an annuities force distributions as it pertains to satisfying the IRS's rules on required minimum distributions. So let's jump in. So to understand the topic that we're gonna discuss today, you'll need to know two main financial pieces. Number one, required minimum distributions, and number two, how annuities work in general. So first up, required minimum distributions. Briefly put, these are mandatory withdrawals one must make from their pre-tax retirement accounts when they age into their 70s. Based on your birth year, that'll dictate if your RMD age was 70 and a half or if it will be age 75. But at the bottom line, the IRS says you must take out a certain amount of money every year from your retirement account that you have not paid taxes on yet once you age into a particular demographic. The other main financial topic you're gonna to wanna to understand, at least to a small degree, are annuities. Now, of course, I am not expecting mastery of this topic. In fact, I don't think anybody can be called a master of annuities because there are an infinite number of different ways to structure these. But philosophically, annuities are insurance products whereby an insurance company for exchange of either a periodic payment or a lump sum of money promises to now make guaranteed income payments to you for a particular duration or for the rest of your life. Most commonly, this is in the form of a single premium, immediate or deferred annuity, whereby an insured or a policy owner gives an insurance company a lump sum of money, and in return, that insurance company promises to pay out uh, an annual income payment to the insured for the rest of their life. Sometimes the policy owner is called the annuitant. These are all just terms that define who is getting the income. Now, annuities are a very popular choice for retirees because it's very simple. Based on whatever the insurance company's payouts are, you can very quickly reverse engineer, if I need five grand a month, uh, how much do I need to give an insurance company to guarantee that I'll get that payment for the rest of my life? And despite all the compliance, uh, annuity payments are one of the few things you can use the G word of guaranteed on in the investment space. The insurance company is guaranteeing that payment schedule to you. Of course, the biggest downside to an annuity is generally once you've stroked that check to the insurance company and you've given them that lump sum, you know, after getting payments for an extended period of time, whenever you die, the insurance company keeps all the rest of that money. Whereas if you held that money not inside of an annuity, uh, whatever you die with, that amount of money can go to heirs, charitable organizations, whatever. For the sake of this video, however, let's fast forward and say you're in your mid 70s, you've now aged into required minimum distribution territory, and at the end of last year, your IRA, which is encompassed of both an annuity and you know security, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever, is worth a million total dollars. Let's say $500,000 of that total IRA is in the form of an annuity, and $500,000 is in the form of a index fund portfolio. Let's say we've gone and done a bunch of math and we've decided that your required minimum distribution for this year is $50,000. Now, if the entire IRA was simply a conglomeration of various index funds, the math is very simple and the course of action is fairly simple as well. By December 31st of that year, if we've done the math and we have figured out that you owe the IRS a $50,000 distribution, now you don't owe the IRS $50,000, you just must pay your pound of flesh and in income taxes and pull out $50,000 from your IRA before December 31st. It's very simple in a portfolio that's entirely comprised of securities. You just need to make sure $50,000 has left that account. But in this example, half of your IRA is in the form of an annuity. So how does that factor in? For the sake of this example, let's say the annuity is making annual payments to you of $30,000. Now in total, your required minimum distribution is $50,000. So intuitively, you might think, okay, well, if my total RMD is 50,000 and my annuity is paying me 30,000, well, then I just need to make sure 20,000 comes out of the non-annuity portion of my IRA, right? Well, before the SECURE Act 2.0, which passed at the end of 2022, 
that intuition would have landed you with a hefty RMD missed tax penalty of 25%. And in fact, before the SECURE Act passed, I think the tax penalty was actually 50% on missed RMDs. And that's because before the SECURE Act 2.0, AKA 2022 and before, the annuity payment only satisfied that annuities required minimum distribution. And you still had to go do the math on the remaining 500 grand in this example, that RMD applicable to that half of the IRA. And that half of the IRA, by definition, if a million bucks had an RMD of 50 grand, that half of the IRA would have needed to also take out $25,000. And yes, that does mean while philosophically your IRA required minimum distribution was 50 grand, you would have actually pulled out 30 grand from the annuity and $25,000 from the securities. So in total, you pulled out 55,000 bucks when your total RMD for the year was actually only 50,000. That means you pulled out 5,000 more than you philosophically needed to, but that was how the rules were written up. So intuitively, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but not many things do you know, in the tax base anyways. Nowadays, meaning 2023 and beyond, you are allowed to factor in the total annuity payment from that IRA to offset the total amount of required minimum distribution. And what that means is we now can actually go and rely on our intuition, whereby if your total required minimum distribution for the year on that IRA is $50,000 and the annuity kicks off 30 grand, you now only need to pull out 20,000 from the securities portion of your IRA. The IRS only now cares that $50,000 in total was removed from your IRAs. And if you're specifically looking up and Googling this, this would be section 204 of the Secure Act 2.0. And the concept I'm talking about is oftentimes referred to as, you know, annuity overages. Uh, basically, your annuity is kicking off more in income than it needs to by the way of required minimum distributions. And this can happen because the IRS updates their uniform lifetime tables that you would base your required minimum distribution calculation off of. And the annuity company isn't gonna change your payment just because the IRS has updated their schedule. So it gets a little bit wonky and I can see why this needed to be clarified. And it's pretty obvious how this was a problem, you know, 2022 and before. Now, for those of you with some experience with annuities, you might be thinking, okay, this all makes sense. However, how do I actually find out what the value of my annuity was AKA the present value of that annuity, what that was on December 31st last year. Well, in a perfect world, the insurance company would explicitly lay out on your December 31st statement, here's exactly what the present value of this annuity is. A lot of times during the accumulation phase of an annuity, AKA when it's not paying you income, the insurance company will designate this annuity is worth a million dollars or whatever. However, once the annuity turns on income, which is oftentimes just referred to as the annuitization phase, then it's kind of hard to get a present value explicitly on a statement. Now in a perfect world, the insurance company would keep doing that, uh, but you might be forced to actually call the insurance company to get an explicit answer. The insurance company is technically supposed to track this on form 5498, but I've heard through the grapevine that this doesn't always happen. And so best bet is to just make sure you're calling the insurance company and getting the explicit present value of said annuity by December 31st of the prior year when doing this year's required minimum distribution calculation. If all of those efforts fail and you still cannot come up with a present value for your current annuity that's held within your IRA, the IRS does say you are allowed to use reasonable good faith when performing your own calculation to determine how much you need to pull out of this IRA in the form of a required minimum distribution. So we ultimately just have to wait for further guidance from the IRS on exactly how they want us to do this math. So to summarize, if you have an annuity held within your IRA and it's kicking off income to you, once you've calculated the total required minimum distribution you'll owe for this tax year, you are allowed to offset the total required minimum distribution with however much is coming out by way of a forced annuity payment. You only need to pull out the delta or the difference between the total RMD and how much the annuity is paying you from the non-annuity portion of your IRA. From a calls to action standpoint, number one, if you didn't know you have required minimum distributions, that's a great place to start, is to figure out if you are in RMD territory. Once you've determined you're in RMD territory, make sure you come up with a cadence to ensure you don't miss any particular deadlines. And furthermore, if you have an annuity held within your IRA, it would behoove you to make sure you come up with a process of grabbing that fair market value, AKA the present value of that annuity on December 31st for the prior year, 
on a regular basis. At a minimum, check your December 31st statement. If there's no fair market value listed, then call the insurance company. And if they're unwilling to provide a particular data set on that, then you might have to do your own math. Of course, once it gets that complicated, it might make some sense to enlist the help of a tax professional just to ensure you don't end up with a knock on the door, which in reality comes from a letter in your mailbox saying, hey, we think you owe more to us than you paid us by way of taxes and we're the IRS. So if that was helpful, if you have further questions, drop them in the comments below or get in touch with the website. We'll help you get squared away. Have an awesome rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.